The member for Calgary Rocky Ridge has the floor. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to speak in the House of Commons and uh, uh, represent my constituents by lending my voice to debate on the various bills that, that come before this chamber. Tonight we're talking about Bill C-35, uh, which is an act respecting early learning and child care in Canada. So, Mr. Speaker, um, you know, I've knocked on a lot of doors as, as, as a candidate and even, even as, a, as an activist in, in the past. And uh, um, you meet a lot of people at the doors, especially in a riding like mine that is, um, you, you know, it's, it's a suburban riding. It's, it's a, full of neighborhoods geared toward uh, younger parents with young families. My riding is uh, statistically younger than... Uh, than the average in Canada and uh, full of, of uh, homes geared toward families with children. So you see a lot of kids at the doors, you see a lot of parents with kids at the doors. And parents are under a lot of pressure. Uh, families are under a lot of pressure. We are in the midst of a cost of living crisis. We are in an inflation crisis where food transportation, housing, all of these things are ever more expensive. Uh, the government has done many things to make these things more expensive, like the carbon tax, which harms, uh, uh, basically raises the price of everything, but especially food and, and, and transportation, whether it's gasoline, bus passes, or, or the, the way that transportation costs inflates everything. But uh, child care is, of course, uh, among the, the many uh, ever-increasing expenses that parents face. And, you know, when you're, when you're out door knocking, you get to a door and there's often, uh, you, you never know what you're walking into. You're, we're, you're door knocking the whole street. I think every political candidate here uh, knows this, this experience. It, you know, you may get to a door and a, and a young family with a toddler in, in one arm and a couple more uh, uh, active kids uh, in the house. And, you know, these parents are often, uh, you know, you might even hit them at a, at a moment of stress. And, uh, you know, they will talk about a lot of things that, that make uh, life stressful for parents, and they talk about affordability. Um, I don't know that I have talked to a parent at a door that said, you know, what, what we really need is a bill that will declare things like quality, availability, affordability, and accessibility, and, and, uh, and inclusiveness, and create a new board that uh, will report to a, to a minister. You know, they just want to know that they've got access to a child care space. Or more often, it's a more general sense of financial relief that they are looking for. Uh, of which, of course, child care is a, is a big piece for many, uh, for many families. But, uh, so this bill tonight, that we're debating tonight, I, I, it doesn't offer much in the way of uh, relief of the, of the financial stress and strain that parents are facing and the ability to, to have confidence and, and know that they're going to have uh, space, uh, child care space, saying the words uh, availability does not create childcare space, uh, Mr. Speaker. And so if, if one actually goes through and, and flips through the pages of this bill, uh, there, there really isn't a whole lot here, Mr. Speaker. You've got a few pages of, uh, of throat clearing and uh, definitions and things like that. You get down to its purpose and declarations where they, you know, they will boldly say that, uh, you know, what their vision is for a Canada-wide community-based learning and child care system and its uh, commitment to ongoing collaboration with partner uh, with provinces and Indigenous peoples to support them in their efforts. I mean, it, it goes on with this kind of, of talk of goals. And I suppose it's good to have goals, Mr. Speaker. You know, if I was a motivational speaker or something, I guess I would, I, you, you, you know, I would encourage people that way. But, uh, you know... Just stating that you have goals isn't going to create a child care space, and neither will this bill. Uh, the funding principles that are stated here enshrine in law, uh, I guess, this, the government's um, acknowledgement and, and agreement with the agreements that they have already entered into with the various provinces and territories. So these, these great agreements 
exist separately, um, and this uh, this bill just talks about them and uh, uh, talks about their their principle. Um, and you know, the, the one principle they're quite clear on is that the only model of childcare that they um, really want to address through their through not only this bill but their their entire uh, program and the agreements that they've entered into is is government and nonprofit uh, child care that will exclude many parents and many uh, entrepreneurs who happen to almost always be women, Mr. Speaker, who uh, operate existing child care facilities. There are many models of child care that are not that, that are at best uh, not affected at all by this by this bill, uh, but at worst are actually threatened or challenged uh, by this bill, and that came out in testimony uh, when this bill was discussed at uh, at the committee stage. So, the the one concrete thing that this bill certainly actually does is establish the National Advisory Council on early learning and child care. So they've created a board. And again, I don't think that that is, uh, is something that, uh, that will do anything in of itself to create child care spaces that don't exist. And, uh, but you know, we know the Liberals like boards that gives them an outlet for them to appoint uh, their friends. Uh, we, we've seen this before. Uh, they could appoint, uh, you know, defeated liberal candidates or uh, liberal donors or any of their friends. And um, it comes in handy, Mr. Speaker, for this uh, government to have their friends appointed to various boards. Uh, we see that uh, rather shockingly uh, working itself out with the appointment of the, uh, the special rapporteur. Um, but. This bill doesn't do anything for Canadians who can't access spaces. This bill does help some families who already have access, and those families are benefiting from this government's vision for childcare. They are having their costs reduced. There are an entirely other there, an, there is an entire other set of parents and children that do not have access. We have entire provinces that are virtually, uh, virtually entire provinces where there, there is no child care. Child care deserts, they have been called, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Saskatchewan, uh, it's been remarked on, on how, uh, how many people in that province have no access to a child care space. And there's nothing in this bill that is going to address that. In fact, it may even harm uh, some uh, of, of, of the entrepreneurs, as, as I said, that, that have existing businesses that are not, uh, that don't fall within this model. Newfoundland and Labrador is another province where we heard during the committee study on the limitations of space that, that nothing in this bill will address. So it's easy to say the words accessibility, it's easy to say the words affordability, and easy to say the words uh, um, uh, quality and uh, affordability and inclusivity. But it's hard to actually uh, see these spaces created and brought into existence. And there are just, there are too many Canadians that are, are left out by this bill. Uh, it's a shame that, um, that sensible amendments that might have helped modify the, the, the principles of the bill to make it more inclusive of different models of child care um, across Canada, but that uh, sadly didn't happen. So we are, we are left with a bill that is full of promise, but short on actual substance that will uh, improve the lives of, uh, of Canadian families. And I think it uh, looks like I'm out of time, so I'll leave it at that and uh, be happy to take any questions or hear any comments from uh, other members. Questions and comments, uh, question et commentaire, uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, as, like you, I listen to the member, and after listening to the member, one draws the conclusion that he doesn't support uh, the legislation. 
Um, yet, I suspect that the Conservative Party, when it right comes down to it, they will likely be voting in favour of it. So as much as the member was so critical of the legislation, we recognize that there are Conservative Premiers, Premiers across, virtually from coast to coast, saying that this is, uh, uh, that the $10 a day care and the national plan that we put into place is working. We're getting more daycare spots. Where we're seeing the reduction to $10 a, a, a day childcare. My question to the member is: Number one, is he going to vote for the legislation in favour? Uh, and number two, does he not support $10 a day daycare? Honourable Member for Calgary, Rocky Ridge. <laughs> well, uh, he, there's something of a false premise there that, that this bill will suddenly conjure $10 daycare uh, for everybody, uh, which is is not what this bill will will do. Uh, the member, though, he he um, wanted to ask me. He did ask me a direct question about support for this bill, and I will point out to him: I voted for this bill at second reading. I supported this bill to go to committee where it could have been improved through committee study. It was very disappointing that the government members on that committee, the members of the government's caucus that are on that committee, were not open to amendment. We had, ironically, the block of, of all, the, 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 the separatist party was actually prepared to work with conservatives to improve a bill uh, that on a national uh, federal program. Um, so there were members at committee prepared to make this bill better. Um, we're, I, I continue to, uh, to wrestle with rewarding um, the failure of this government to actually fulfill the objectives of the bill, and yet I do support the objective of child care uh, availability that's affordable and high quality for Canadians. Questions and comments, question your commentaire. I see someone, but I have to go to the honourable member for Nunavut first. And I'd like to thank the member for his intervention. Uh, what I like very much about this bill, uh, I've spoken on it a few times, and I've raised questions about it as well, uh, is that it enshrines into legislation the importance of Indigenous peoples' rights, uh, as well as uh, uh, enshrining. Uh, um, international instruments like the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And I wonder if the member agrees that enshrining these in international instruments is very important to ensuring that our children are getting the best quality care that they deserve. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Rocky Ridge. Well, I think that's, that's just it. It's about the actual care and, and uh, quality of, of care for the children. I think most parents, given the choice between a bill that um, talks about principle and, and enshrines principles, uh, if they had the choice between a, a bill with enshrined principles and an affordable daycare space, they would probably choose the affordable daycare space. So this is, this is again, what we see often with the, the government that, uh, and the bills they introduce, is they want to be rewarded for the intentions of their bill rather than the ability, than, than uh, their ability to actually execute and achieve the outcomes that uh, that they that they state. Well said. Comments, because you're commentator, the honourable member for Calgary Shepherd. Thank you, Speaker. I'm so glad to have caught your eye. This I want to ask my colleague from the, from the diagonal opposite side of Calgary he has a writing very similar to my own, and like myself, he door knocks a lot of doors during. Uh, election time. I, I've never heard a constituent resident of mine tell me that what they wanted was to see a bill passed that created a commission or a national council where people would be paid to talk about an issue as opposed to actually addressing the issue and dealing with it directly. The member did go through the legislation. I wonder if you could comment on that. Honourable member for Calgary, Rocky Ridge, 40 well, seconds. That was uh, exactly my, uh, my point. He's, the, the member is, is correct that this, the one concrete thing that this bill does is create a commission uh, and create paid positions for people to talk about health care, uh, sorry, about uh, child care. And, um, and I don't see uh, the specific, uh, a real true strategy to delivering um, these on these uh, uh, objectives that are stated in the, uh, in the legislation.